Welcome to Applied Economics course number 3480. This is a topics course, so it's listed in the syllabus as a topics course, but the actual name is Agribusiness and Food Supply slash Value Chain Issues. It's the first time I've taught a class totally online, distance learning. I've done some hybrid classes, which are partial online learning and partial lecture. So this is the first time I've taught a class like this. In preparation for this class, last fall, I walked, I took a class for credit as a non-degree seeking student, and we use a different technology, Blackboard, um, as opposed to Canvas, but I learned a lot in that process about how to prepare and how to study through a distance learning class. And so I've taken some of those concepts and put them together for this. So what is this class all about? Why am I teaching a class of topics course? I think the easiest way to think about this is, look at all these different cheeses up here. In the United States, this is what we typically think of as Parmesan cheese. It says Parmesan cheese. This is a Parmesan cheese made in Wisconsin. This is a Parmesan cheese that we import from Chile. This is a Parmesan cheese that we import from Argentina. And this is Parmesan cheese that the Europeans claim is the actual Parmesan cheese with the hundreds of years old recipe made in Parma, Italy. Who gets the right to call something Parmesan cheese? Parmesan cheese, as you will see from one of the lectures for this class, was developed hundreds of years ago in Parma, Italy. It's got a very unique artisan style production system, and the Italians and the European Union's claim they should be the only ones to use the word Parmesan cheese. And yet, I can go to the store and buy all these different types of cheeses, all marked Parmesan cheese. From an intellectual property rights standpoint, who gets to own the word Parmesan cheese? And in fact, is what you're going to see through a series of exercises in class and the, your final project, you're going to choose one of these foods that's labeled after geography and put together a presentation, a digital media project that everyone in the class will look at as part of this. The European Union has more than 2,000 of these, basically beverages, spirits, food, artisan breads, and so forth, named after geography. Again, if I look at all these cheeses, they all look about the same. They've all, they're all hard cheese, except for this one here, but I could grate every one of these and make a Parmesan cheese. So this is a very current issue right now in our trade discussions with the European Union. Who gets to own the words to, to cheeses like feta cheese, Asiago cheese, Parmesan cheese? We've got Vidalia onions produced in Georgia. We've got coffees named after the different types of Hawaiian um, islands, and each coffee variety is grown on one of those islands. So as you start looking around the world, there's a whole bunch of these different foods named after geography. Some are more recent than others, but they become a big issue in, with regard to intellectual property rights. And so this course is a, designed to look at what's going on in our supply chains and value chains. What we're going to see is a tremendous disruption going on in our supply chains. More and more companies are moving to a segregated supply chain. What I mean is that we're going to use a term called chain captains. These are folks like McDonald's, Amazon with their acquisition of Whole Foods. They're the ones closest to consumers and they want the, the type of foods produced in their food system, sold in their restaurants, food service, and retail grocery stores to have certain types of characteristics. And so for therefore, they're trying to segregate the supply chain to develop these unique systems, which is different than the way we've traditionally done uh, purchased foods and, and the way our system, system has been put together. So that's kind of a broad overview of the class. You've got my biography in your syllabus, but essentially, I'm the oldest of 12 children. Um, my family had an 80-acre farm in Rice County, Minnesota. I went through schools here in the Twin Cities, St. Thomas, I did a Master in Agriculture Education at the University of Minnesota, worked for a while, went back and did my doctorate at Purdue, worked for 14 years at Kansas State, and then had a chance to come back home here to the University of Minnesota in 2010. I do a lot of things in agribusiness, and so we're going to talk more about that this semester, about this topic, which is very unique to agribusiness. What do you need to do to succeed in this class? You have to have a working knowledge of the Microsoft Office package. 
So we're going to rely heavily on PowerPoint and the different things available in PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, and then a little bit on Microsoft Excel. But those are the three big things you should have some knowledge about. And any student at the University of Minnesota should, should have some knowledge of that. There will be one exam in this course. So this is a little different than the, the distance online class that I took last fall where I had a timed final exam. This course will be in person. You need to be present and I will check your IDs inside the classroom on that ex final exam date which is posted on the syllabus. And you have to physically be there for the final exam. If you don't take the final exam, you'll have a zero on the, the class. So that's a little unique. I'm doing that because it's the first time I've taught a class like this. I'm not sure how to put together an exam that's strictly true, false, multiple choice. I would like to give short answer type questions to allow you to um, provide information to me. And I, what I found is typically students will do better in that type of format. There's no textbook for the class, but you will be choosing a reading from this book done by my colleague, Professor Ray Goldberg, at the Harvard Business School. He's now working in the Harvard Kennedy School of Public Affairs. But these are a series of interviews done by people in the value chain who are working on different food things. And we'll talk more about that as we go through the semester. This is a three credit class. What does that mean? Well, on average, you're supposed to be spending three hours a week in the classroom. And for every hour you're in the classroom, you've got three hours outside the classroom. So more or less on average, in a three credit class over 15 weeks, you've got what they would say 45 hours of in-class content and then another 90 hours of outside the classroom. I, in designing a course like this, not every week looks the same. So on a topics perspective, as you look some weeks we've just got one topic, other times we have one topic but it goes over three weeks. On average, I will abide by the university policy in hours, but just bear in mind, some weeks you may have three hours of audio content, and other weeks you may have one hours of audio content, and then you'll have things to read. Some weeks, when you've got more audio content, you'll have less things to read, and vice versa in the weeks when you have less audio content. You will have access to the transcript from all the audio content. You will have the audio lectures themselves, and if there's any PowerPoints I'm using in those presentations, you will have access to those. What I found last fall was, was using, having access to the transcript was very, very useful to me in my online class. I took the transcript, I downloaded it out of um, the closed captioning, saved, to, saved it to Microsoft Word, triple spaced it, and then I took notes in between the, the different parts of the audio content. Now, I'm not aware of anybody else using that type of system. And so when we moved to Canvas here, I had to work very hard to get a transcript to outload. You're not just getting the closed caption transcript, if you will. We've cleaned it up. We've tried to, we've single spaced it, but you'll be able to take that document and do whatever you want to it. You can do like I did and double or, or triple space it and make notes. But what I found was following the transcript, listening to the lecture as opposed to watching it, made me a better student when I took my online class last fall. You've got your own study habits, I acknowledge that, but just what I found useful was following the transcript and then listening to the audio. Um, anytime you want to visit with me, you can. I've got a handout in Canvas that looks at how to use the calendar. All you're going to do is go to my calendar within the University of Minnesota Gmail system and just send me a calendar invitation. It's very easy to use. So. Broadly speaking, again, the course is going to look at why do the European Union, the United States, Mexico, Canada, and even Asian countries, why have we agreed to disagree on how we label names? And so as we go through the semester, keep this analogy in mind. This is what I would call the weakest case for Parmesan cheese. This is what I would call the strongest case. The cheeses from Argentina and Chile we allow into the United States to, for, through export quotas in Chile and through our imports from um, Argentina, they're made with, these are all made with very similar recipes. But as we're going to see, the quote-unquote true Parmesan cheese from Italy is a much different looking cheese than these cheeses that we've got from Wisconsin, Argentina, Chile, and then um, the Kraft Parmesan cheese. So what are you going to have for assignments in a distance class? You'll have audio content. You'll have short readings each week. 
Again, there's no textbook, but you will have readings. Those are all available online in Canvas, as we'll see here shortly. I will give you a study guide. That study guide is something that I would take, again, what I used in my distance class was, I took notes on the study guide. Anything on that study guide for the entire course is what I will use to devise the final exam. I will try not to deviate from the study guide when I write the final exam. You've got the transcripts. Again, there will be a short assignment where all of you will take uh, a different reading from this textbook, and we'll have more about that in the syllabus. Your digital media project, you will take one of these cheeses, or artisan breads, or spirits, and you will do a digital media project on this. Those will be posted in the Canvas website. Each person in the class will look at everybody else's digital media project. And I will ask one question from each of those presentations on the final exam. Finally, as far as the part of the discussion board, I need a photo from you. So I'm going to put each of you in groups of four to do a short assignment as you work through your digital media project. To do that, because you, you won't know each other, I want to create a photo so you, each of you will know each other. So right now, some of you have got a photo uplifted online within Canvas. If you don't, uh, please send me a photo. I'm not going to share that with anybody. I'm not on Facebook or digital, uh, any type of um, um, Twitter or any of that type of stuff. But I do want the other students in class to see who it is that's in their, their small groups. And so I will need a photo from you, a headshot, if you will, or a picture of you, whatever, whatever speaks to you in terms of who you are. I'll put that as part of the, um, the, the message board project. Let's, take, let's stop for a second and let me walk through what's in Canvas because I think that's a very powerful way of thinking about this class. So let's look at the Canvas website. The book that I referred to by Professor Ray Goldberg will be on reserve in the Waite Library on the second floor of Rattan Hall. It will also be on reserve in the McGrath Library on the St. Paul campus. So all of you will have access to checking out that book and then returning. I think there's like a two or three hour um, hold on that. And you can make a uh, copy or take your camera and make a picture of, the, of the, the short reading that you've got. Whatever it takes to you to get those, the readings for your um, thing. But that's where the, the textbook will be. So let's look at Canvas. You all should know how to use Canvas because we started moving from Moodle to Canvas in the fall of 2018. So I'm, this is not a lecture on, on Canvas per se, but let me just walk through what, what you see there. I will issue periodically announcements about the course. Obviously, if you've got your privacy settings set up, you will get all these announcements into your email. I can't set your privacy settings, but that is something you can do to set up every time I make an announcement or post your scores online or anything like that. You can have that information sent to you to your University of Minnesota email account. But again, I can't do that for you. Let's look at the modules. So these are in order of how we'll look at the class. So for example, here's the syllabus. The syllabus, again, it's going to talk to you about how to set up assignments on my uh, program, my office hours. Again, more information about the book. Here's the course objectives and student learning outcomes, which are pretty important. The two big ones I'm looking at in terms of the university uh, settings on these are to locate and cr critically evaluate information, which I will assess through your digital meeting project, and then have master a body of knowledge and mode of inquiry, which we've done through the readings and the presentations. Um, there is a prerequisite for the, this class, which is basically a high school course in microeconomics or basic economics, or APEC or Econ 1101, which some may have transferred in or some may have taken here. To reinforce that prerequisite, the first couple parts of the class, I will have concepts related to things you would have seen in there that I will discuss in terms of this course. And so that will help reinforce the prerequisite for the class and why we've got that prerequisite on there. Um, so we're going to look at a whole broad range of the the value system or supply chain system for agriculture. There'll be some things focused on production, there'll be some things focused on consumers, and there'll be some things focused on the middle part of the chain. And we've got a lecture that we'll go through the chain and discuss these concepts more in, in um, gr 
greater detail. Um, again, when it comes to cheating in a class like this, I don't know how to, to change it. My digital, my online class last fall had a series of short essays and so forth. Those were run through a, um, uh, a software system that detected whether or not I'd pulled things from the internet and were just as a way to check for plagiarism. We don't have that capability, but just bear in mind, um, I'm a guy like me that reads a lot of things, I'm pretty good at picking out things. So if you're going to use something from the internet or use something from a book or a magazine, I want you to make sure and cite it. Your final digital media project will require you to have references and where you took things, especially if you download images and things like that through the, the, um, the, the semester. Laptop, computer, and electronic device policy. Again, you, you will need a laptop or some type of computer to complete this class because obviously it's in a distance learning format. Um, the university, as you've probably been reading about, is going through a dual security process to require you to log into university applications. One of the nice things about this is you can learn about how to back up your computer and do things like that. So, for example, if you, can, if you were to come to me and say, Dr. Boland, my computer crashed, I couldn't get my assignment done on time, that's really no longer a legitimate excuse because you now have a process that learn, university has done to allow you to back up stuff online in case your computer crashes. So if you're not familiar with university policy on this, I encourage you to look into it. It's a very good thing to have here um, at the, um, uh, the university. Uh, I, I don't allow, there's no reason to turn anything late. So um, on the deadlines when assignments are due, they're due, so if, for example, if an assignment says it's due at 8 a.m., it's due at 8 a.m., not 8 a.m. in one second because between 8 a.m. and 8.01, there are 60 seconds. So I'm interpreting 8 a.m. through Canvas as being at 8 o'clock in the morning. You can shoot me a, a screenshot and say, hey, I had submitted this, but if you were submitting at 8 minutes or eight, 8 hours and 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. The computer online will tell me when you submitted something. Bear in mind that at 8 a.m., there may be a rush of people trying to upload things in the minutes coming up to an 8 a.m. Uh, deadline. So just stagger things. I have to have a policy. That's my policy. 8 a.m. is 8 a.m., not 8 a.m. In, in 15 seconds. Um, so just bear that in mind as you think about submission and how you, you do your work habits. Um, if you have any disability issues, make sure and let me know. Um, the university has a policy to let... Uh, let you know that early in the semester. So within two weeks of the course starting, if you need some special accommodations for the final exam or something else, please let me know so I can start making preparations for you as part of that. Um, I often get questions from students, well, can I earn some extra points? I don't really have a policy with a distance class about earning extra points. However, I am director of the University of Minnesota um, Food Industry Center We've got several activities this springtime. If you want to attend any of these activities, I will give you five extra points for a maximum of 10 points for all three activities. Um, and I don't envision any other extra points being offered as part of this, this course. So the breakdown of points, there'll be a final exam, which is 60% of the class. Your digital media project, which will be um, 10 points. And then uh, there'll be some other things along the way that are not going to give you points, but they are considered part of the digital media project. And so there's, ten, there's one digital media project, a total of 40 points, but there's short assignments along the way based on your discussion board and other things. So I have not written the final exam, um, and so therefore I don't know what it's going to look like, but my guess it could be something like 120 points and... 120 questions with half point each or something like that. I just don't know yet until I write the exam. And because it's the first time I've taught this course, I'll, I'll have to um, give you plenty of guidance as to what I'm going to do in terms of doing the exam. We'll talk more about the Digital Media Project, but there it is there, and I've got a short module that will talk more about that as well. You will have a series of assignments along the way to get you motivated doing this and get feedback from fellow students in the class. Grading scale, I don't have, this is the first time I've taught this class. I have no idea how to set a grading scale. My fear is if I say 90% and above is an A, 
and all of a sudden, you know, I didn't write a very good final exam or something, and the average score in the class fifty percent. I've, I've, um, I've, I've, uh, you know, disenfranchised a whole number of students. So I'm not putting a specific grading scale on there. I am using the university grading scale. Um, I it's because it's the first time I've taught this class. I will bear that in mind as I go through the semester. But I will give you guidance before the end of the semester as to where I think you are with regard to an A, B, C, D, or F in this class. But I don't have a formal scale set up yet for the class. So that's the syllabus. And then I'll just give a highlight of the modules. So for example, again, you can work as fast as you want in this class or as slow as you want. I don't think you ought to work slowly, but, but you can work as quickly or slowly as you want. Um, the first mod, the first lecture is 40 minutes. There is no lecture in the entire class that will go that length ever again. I should have broken those up maybe, but um, I was trying to set the, the pace, and that was the first module I did. It ended up being at 40 minutes, and I'm comfortable with that. If you look at the transcript, I think it's okay, but the, the rest of the modules will not be that length. I've tried to keep them all at 5 to 15 minutes for the rest of the semester. Um, there's one reading about this to start this class. So the first week, for example, you've got almost 50 minutes of audiovisual content and then a somewhat long reading to get the course started. Week two, then, we're going to look at um, price, risk, and food demand. Here I'm pulling in the, the, um, the things to the class that are part of the prerequisites and how they link with your digital media project and what it all means for these intellectual property rights. And so we'll go through a number of activities there. Um, You've got several things based on uh, value chains and supply chains. We've got some readings that you can access there. Then weeks three, four, and five, I've actually got one topic, but it's over a three-week period. So here, again, I've got a number of lectures on supply chains and value chains. And then I've got some examples on hazelnuts, um, canning peaches, blueberry, um, I've got some readings based on case studies that I've done that, that we'll talk about in that section. And then we go back to one uh, a week there on commodity checkoff, the marketing year, which is a very important concept in agriculture, and then marketing orders. Um, and then we're going to go look at unique, uniqueness based on information technology. This is a big issue right now as these chain captains are trying to communicate information to consumers what's on a food label. And so we'll talk about food label, what are the label claims being made, and how they link to the production of that product. Um, and this is where we'll start talking about more closely about some of the concepts that relate to your digital media project. We'll talk a bit about some of the scientific issues going on with, um, with this. We'll have some topics like lab meat, plant-based meat, and conventionally grown meat. Um, we'll introduce a topic of what's a clean label. We're going to look at what's going on structurally in the supply chain. So the whole issue of make or buy. How does a firm, as you think about organizing the supply chain, where do they set their vertical boundaries of what they're going to contract or what they're going to own in terms of vertical integration? And then finally, at the end of the semester, I'll introduce a concept called stakeholder theory. As more and more people start looking at our food system, they, they argue a lot of different stakeholders have got things to say about the food system. And so price is not necessarily the only way we're going to organize the, the, um, the food system. So that's sort of a big, broad summary of what this course is. Um, uh, the assignments, again, I'll give you some guidance on the study guide and so forth. There'll be a discussion board. These discussion boards we set up for um, four students apiece. So you're going to have a closed discussion board for just the four of you and then uh, that will be in there. Um, so, and I don't think I've got something in the library course page because I've already talked about the, uh, um, that issue. So that's the class in terms of Canvas and what we're going to be looking at. So, again, welcome to the class. Um, this is AggieCon 3480, and we taught distance education, distance learning this semester.